The next item of business is a motion to approve a statutory rule. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. But the draft grants to water and sewerage undertakers order Northern Ireland 2017 be approved. I call the Minister for Infrastructure, Mr Hazard. I beg to move. The order I am bringing forward today extends the power for my department to pay a grant to NI Water in lieu of domestic water charges. The current powers to pay a grant will expire on 31 March 2017, and the recent 2016 Water and Sewerage Services Act passed by the Assembly in January last year provided the power to extend this date by an order laid before and approved by resolution of the Assembly. The Assembly will be aware of the commitment of the Executive not to bring in water charging. It is the intention of the Executive to continue to bear the cost of water charges on behalf of domestic customers for the next five years. My department had a timetable for implementing this order, which would have enabled it to have been completed the draft affirmative resolution process in adequate time prior to the expiry date of 31 March 2017. However, the imminent dissolution of the Assembly means that I have decided to bring the draft order to the Assembly today. This grant provides NI Water with the funding to enable it to maintain drinking water supplies and deliver sewerage services. Without funding, NI Water would quickly run out of cash, and these services, which are fundamental to public health, economic growth and environmental protection, would be put at risk. I commend the motion to the Assembly and ask that it approve the order. McAleer. I call Declan McAleer. Um, I'd uh, uh, just like to take this uh, opportunity to the commend uh, this motion to the House today. The, this evening, the draft grants to Water and Sewage Undertakers Order uh, 2017. Uh, this, is a, this is a good news story, and it's certainly in line with our party's position of opposing uh, domestic charges uh, in, in the north and indeed right across the island. It's particularly good news uh, for the thousands of uh, householders across the north who would have otherwise been faced with a, an average of a £400 bill for water, which they already pay for in their rates, and indeed, as a result of the, the grant to NA Water, they're also paying for it in their taxes as well. Uh, in relation to our own party position, we believe that access to water is a, a basic right, and we welcome the continuation of this policy against water charges. And as I said previously, it will be particularly welcomed by um, hard-pressed families who are struggling to make, make, make ends meet. Um, again, uh, in commending the motion, I want to also state that we, uh, as a party, are fully uh, committed to the opposing and the resisting of water charges. And by the Minister bringing this uh, piece of legislation, this motion to the House uh, this, e this evening, along with the decision that he made uh, prior to Christmas to cease the practice of installing new meters in, in homes, uh, new homes, uh, this demonstrates uh, his commitment, indeed our, our commitment, to the implementation of this policy against domestic water charges. So I commend the motion. I call Stephen Farry. Uh, Madam uh, Principal, uh, Deputy Speaker, um, it is a shame this debate is coming quite late in the evening after the uh, Renewable Heat uh, Initiative because the, the consequences of the decisions that the Assembly are taking this evening may be uh, as deep and indeed far reaching as the, the, the need to have mitigation measures in relation to RHI and indeed may go further in, in that regard. This is, is being presented as a, as a good news story, uh, clearly by, uh, by, by Sinn Féin, who are keen to get this rushed through ahead of the, an election campaign. Um, but I, I do fear that they are not fully thinking this through, and indeed they, they are making a, a commitment that may not actually uh, stand up in terms of, of wider scrutiny or indeed uh, be, be a wise one to, to be making. So let me make a number of points in that regard. Uh, first of all, they claim that they're trying to give certainty in terms of water charges. Um, that begs the question as to why they want to go as far as 2022 uh, in that particular uh, re regard. Uh, especially when, and I welcome any clarification to the contrary on this one, I'm not sure there's been formal executive approval of this. And certainly this is a commitment that's been made ahead of the formal agreement uh, of, ne of never mind a one-year budget, but what should be a three-, four-year budget on the part of, of the executive. So this is something where we, the executive or this minister is potentially making uh, long-term um, 
financial commitment uh, in terms of how resources are used by the executive. It may well be that most parties are perfectly comfortable with that, but there are consequences that flow from that. There is also the issue as well in that to what extent he actually has the capacity uh, to bind uh, the future, future assemblies, um, and I stress the word multiple assemblies, uh, given the potential risk uh, of, uh, of future elections, etc., in, into, into the future. But the main points I would make are ones regarding um, the substance of this. And there are probably three aspects that I think the Minister does need to properly address uh, before the, the, the Assembly. Um, and this really relates to what are other options he has. Now, great play has been made that we do, we do not want to pass on additional charges uh, to uh, those people um, to, who, are, who are paying, uh, who are in a domestic situation. We do not want them to be paying water charges um, per, per se. And it may well be that we do not want to raise any additional revenue for, for, from people. But it is the case that if we were to simply shift resource that we currently raise through the regional rate, and instead to raise that through a water charge, entirely on a revenue neutral basis. Uh, and if that was linked to a change in the governance nature, nature of, of NI Water, that NI Water would have the capacity, uh, based upon the collection of a water charge, to actually go on a stronger footing to borrow commercially. In turn, that would open up the potential for further investment in our infrastructure at no further cost in revenue from the Northern Ireland uh, block grant. So I fear that we actually are foregoing here a major opportunity to bring in additional resource uh, to invest in our crumbling water and sewage structure across uh, Northern Ireland. And indeed, we are conscious that in Belfast there is a major issue in terms of the sustainability of the infrastructure uh, and something that may actually inhibit our ability to attract uh, inward investment in, 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 co in coming years. The approach that, we're, that has been taken uh, by the Minister, and it builds upon what has happened uh, previously, about uh, treating uh, Northern Ireland Water as a, a, essentially a non-departmental uh, public body, stands in contrast uh, to the concern that has been rightly voiced uh, in relation to potential reclassification of uh, housing associations by the Office of National Statistics and the consequence that will flow from that in terms of their restricted ability to borrowing. So there is a sense that we get it on one hand that this is a big deal in terms of housing associations and the importance that, that, a, a, that all people who are trying to do a public good in terms of building houses should have the maximum ability uh, to borrow money. But whenever it comes to Northern Ireland Water, for political reasons because the issue of water charges is just this massive taboo that no one is prepared to, 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 uh, to take on. We are foregoing the ability uh, to look at the governance issue around Northern Ireland water and allow them the ability uh, to, 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 to borrow commercially. So potentially we are losing uh, a, a, an opportunity cost in resource per annum which is on a much greater scale than what, what is the current liability from the overcommitment in terms of the renewable heat initiative, just to put this particular point uh, in, in context. So if people want to go out and make a big fuss about what they're doing about uh, renewable heat and cracking down on corruption and the waste of resources, then they need to be consistent about that and look at, at something that actually stands uh, right, right before us. Leaving aside the, the absolute opportunity that flows from a potential uh, reclassification about how we raise the same am amount of money, there are also issues that the Minister does need to address in terms of issues around the VAT treatment in terms of, of water charges and uh, sorry, the, the, the current approach that we are taking, uh, which may uh, leave us open to tens of millions of pounds of additional ch uh, charges uh, to, the, to the block grant uh, in terms of how uh, VAT uh, is, is uh, how the, the current approach is treated in terms of, by HMRC in terms of VAT. The other point to make uh, as well is that I uh, appreciate we are uh, on schedule to leave the European Union, but like the Minister, uh, I am determined that we should uh, do our best to, to remain uh, and, and, and seek some form of special status. But there is a running risk uh, of infraction proceedings uh, to, to Northern Ireland uh, from the, the failure of us to, to adopt a different approach in terms of how people pay, uh, pay for water. So there are three major substantive issues there uh, which I do not believe have properly 
have been aired in relation uh, to this. Those are the issue in terms of VAT, the issues of uh, European uh, Commission infraction proceedings, and most uh, importantly, uh, the, the, the opportunity foregone to revisit uh, the classification of Northern Ireland water uh, and uh, through the, the ability of a, of a separate water charge uh, to allow them uh, to uh, borrow com commercially and therefore have a much greater uh, amount of resource that can be reinvested in terms of improving our infrastructure. And in saying all of those three points, can I just re-emphasise the point that all of this can be done without us having to incur uh, any additional revenue in net terms from households. This can be done from shifting the same buck that we raised through the regional rate, but instead raising that same buck uh, through a, a, a water charge. In essence, we get a bigger bang from our, from our buck if we are prepared to be creative. And in particular, I think the finance minister was here previously. He has made great play of his willingness to be creative and really push all the boundaries in terms of making the best use of the resources available to uh, the, the Northern Ireland executive, particularly in these straitened times when we have to squeeze out the maximum efficiency from every pound and, and, and every penny. I am slightly confused and bewildered as to why, for superficial political reasons, we are not prepared to be a little bit more creative and innovative in terms of how we manage our money. I call William Humphrey, Chair of the Infrastructure Committee. Um, thank you very much, Madam Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I welcome the opportunity to speak as Chair of the Committee for Infrastructure and the Statute relating to the Grants Water and Sewage Services Undertakers Order, Northern Ireland 2017. The purpose of the rule is to extend the period during which the Department will pay a subsidy to Northern Ireland Water in lieu of domestic water charging. The Committee considered the proposal for statutory rule on its meeting on 12 October 2016, and the Committee agreed that, uh, with the proposal with the dissent of one member, Mrs Kelly Armstrong. The Department for Infrastructure wrote to the Committee on 10 January 2017, requesting that the rule be considered by the Committee as a matter of urgency in order to facilitate the scheduling of a debate in the Chamber. The letter stated, due to the uncertainty around the restoration of the Assembly, it is important to get this legislation through the Assembly process urgently to ensure that Northern Ireland Water can carry out its functions from 1 April 2017. On 10 January 2017, the examiner of statute rules considered the order and indicated uh, on, uh, to the committee on the 11th of January 2017, just before the committee meeting commenced, that she had no issues to raise. Principal Deputy Speaker, in light of this, the committee considered the statute rule in its meeting on the 11th of January and again agreed the rule, again with the dissension of only one member, Mrs Armstrong. Liam Erantara Bonagar, Chris Hazard. I call the Minister for Infrastructure, Chris Hazard, to conclude and wind on the debate. I thank those members who have uh, commented on the motion here this evening. Uh, some general issues and several specific points uh, have been raised. Um, perhaps turning first to uh, Mr. Farry's comment, uh, you know, why for the period of time? Um, the executive and members of this House will be aware, obviously, that we've been public statement about this. The executive have made a commitment not to introduce uh, water charging in the current mandate for domestic customers, uh, and this time is due to run out in 2021. The extension to 2022 was required to give the new executive time to consider that position uh, on water charging. In addition, NI Water estimates that it would require two to three years from any change in the position before it could introduce a charging system for domestic customers. Uh, but that won't be happening. Um, the second point Mr Fry raised was around the governance issues and the way forward. All issues that I have given thought to, issues I have no doubt may have featured in the, in the mandate in the time ahead. Uh, but we are not at that point today. Uh, this assembly is about to be dissolved. The measures we are taking here tonight is to ensure that NI Water does not dissolve in front of our very eyes too, and the customers are then asked to pick up the burden uh, for that decision. So that is the position we are at. Um, I am more than happy to state that th this, uh, we will not be introducing domestic water charging. Say that the yes, indeed, yeah. indeed. The Minister has alluded to the fact that the assembly is about to dissolve, and we will all go to the doors in the coming weeks. Can I commend the Minister, certainly when we go to the doors, and there will be many, many issues which will be raised. It is good for us as Assembly members to be able to say to people, no water tax. That was a guarantee given over many, many years, and one has now been delivered yet again. 
Yeah, look, uh, and again, I welcome the comments. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if the Alliance Party are upfront and, and honest with the people on the doors when they say, we're against all of this, but at the end of the day, do you know we also want to introduce water charges? Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's something they keep off their election trifles. I'm happy to give away, yeah. Well, if the member was, um, was aware last year, I mean, all the points I just read out um, were essentially in our Assembly manifesto, and indeed I uh, answered the questions around that in quite de in a considerable detail in terms of the Stephen Nolan show. I don't want to bring back memories of the, uh, to the Minister of the Stephen Nolan programme at elections, but um, while I have the floor, I just want, just want to clarify from, from, from the Minister. He's saying two, two different things. First of all, he's saying that he does appreciate there's a need to look at the issue of governance, um, and if that was the case, I would accept him but perhaps extending the current subsidy to Northern Ireland Water for a year or two years while he, can, uh, while he or his successor uh, conducts a review in terms of governance. But, but that is at odds with actually giving an extension through to 2022, which essentially means the status quo for another five to six years and foregoes the opportunity uh, to have that wider review of governance, which I stress if done properly, could bring in tens of millions of pounds every year extra beyond what we currently have to allow us uh, to, to invest in our infrastructure beyond what we currently have. Well, look, I'm delighted that the Lions' argument around water charging doesn't chime with more of the electorate than uh, what they are and, and that the particular uh, reason doesn't hold sway because this executive uh, certainly is not for turning this issue. There will be no water charges for domestic customers, uh, and we have ensured of that. With regards to the Water Framework Directive, um, I am very aware of Article 9 uh, of the Framework Directive, which requires member states to have water pricing policies that provide adequate incentives for users to use water resources efficiently. NA Water already charges non-domestic users. Also, a proportion of the domestic rates contributes towards the cost of domestic water charges. The executive has undertaken not to introduce household charges, and I believe uh, that runs in tandem to that. Um, Concoli, I believe that this order will reinforce the executive's commitment not to bring in water charging for households, and I thank the members for their support. In conclusion, I would also like to thank the examiner of statutory rules and the Committee for Infrastructure for their speedy consideration on this order, and the Business Committee for its assistance in enabling me to bring this important piece of legislation to the Assembly today. I ask the Assembly to approve the order. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. Nagoalti Evolver, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Nagoalti and Aidan. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it.